So here is the pressure PID controller I installed on my uh, pre-millennium last night. Uh, I thought I'd just make a quick overview video in case anyone else in the group was interested in doing something similar. Uh, so the idea was it would be really nice to be able to control the uh, boiler pressure on the fly, kind of like those older machines that have the two position switch for brewing and steaming down here. Um, but this will do it much more precisely uh, because it's electronically controlled. Um, but importantly for this project, I didn't want to make any permanent modifications to the machine um, because I know someone in the past um, did a PID controller where they put, they, they used a commercial PID controller and they put a thermometer um, actually through the bottom of the boiler. Um, but that requires putting a hole in the boiler and I wasn't willing to potentially damage any of the machine. Um, but it is very easy to put a T right here and measure the pressure. So this can easily be removed um, uh, if I decide to remove this in the future. Um, and this is a pressure transducer that just converts the pressure to a digital signal, um, which then I read here in the control box. I opened it up um, to show some of the components. Um, but in here we have an Arduino Pro Trinket with a lithium polymer backpack. So it has a small battery in here to operate. Um, and it can be recharged with like an Android phone charger. Um, see this little hole right here. So just plug this in there and it recharges the battery. I don't know how long the battery lasts, but I would suspect a reasonable amount of time. Uh, then out of the control box are the two wires that actually run uh, underneath the machine and through one of those ventilation holes. So again, I didn't, I didn't even have to drill any holes. Um, and they run into a solid state relay, which is sitting about here. Um, which is in between the switch and the pressure stat. So it just breaks the circuit or, or closes the circuit. Um, then in the upper side of the control box, um, there is a potentiometer, a switch, and two LEDs. So if I make sure my computer's awake here, um, this, this cable here goes um, to a serial to USB converter, which then allows me to um, read the real-time data on my computer. Um, so both the control box and the machine have to be on. So you can turn the machine on. It's not going to do anything until uh, the controller is on because the circuit is currently open in there. So grabbing this, um, when I flip the switch, it actually powers on the board. Um, but the yellow light won't come on until the system is booted. So now it's booted. This lets you know if the battery is dead. You can hear the machine coming on. Um, and uh, lets you know that the, the, the uh, controller is booted. So I have the potentiometer wound all the way to the left. So right now the set point is zero and the pressure is about zero. So the duty cycle of the relay is off. And you can see here that the pressure is at zero. So I'm going to put it up to about uh, 0.25 atmospheres. You can hear the machine comes on instantly. You see over here, oh, actually, the set point is now 0.25, the pressure is 0 0.02, and the relay is on 100%. So essentially right now it's just full on, um, and it was already hot, so it shouldn't take too long to get up to temperature. Um, and what happens is that when the set point is very close to the measured pressure, the green light comes on. So the green light lets you know when it's essentially done moving up to its, its set point. Um, and uh, after a little bit of tuning of the PID parameters, um, it actually works very, very well. Um, it gets up to temp, it, it doesn't take very long, and it, it hits the set point, holds it very, very well. So let's see here. Um, you can hear it's starting to make that squeaking noise as the vent leaks a bit um, and it should jump up to 0.25 bar as fast as it would um, if you would just switched on the machine with no modifications and hopefully we'll get to see uh, how the controller responds. So now you can see the pressure over here is rising 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.7 it's almost there and you can see that the duty cycle begins to drop off as it approaches the set point. 0 0.23, 0 0.24, so it's kind of, it's getting there, it's close. 
And then over here, control box, the light is turned green to let me know that the pressure is within 0 0.02 atmospheres of the set point. There you go. That is indeed the case. Now I guess I'll wind it up to, oh, and over here you can see that that is the case. I'll wind it up to 0.5 bar, or atmospheres, I guess. And you'll see that it, it approaches it very quickly. 39, 3, and I'll show you over here. It doesn't overshoot or wobble. It pretty much just goes straight to 0.5 and stops. Very nice. And over here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And the green light is on again. So you'll see that when it gets turned up, the green light goes off. I'll try this. Because the set point is no longer equal to the pressure being measured. And up it goes again. Set point is 0.76, so it should go about to that mark in between 0 0.5 and 1. And boom, there it is. You can hear it turn off. And it just is very, it's running the relay at about between uh, 0.2 and 0.3, or, or rather 20% and 30% to maintain the temperature. And I've noticed it hovers around 11 once it's stabilized, so it uses very, very, very little power. And the needle does not wobble, it just sits there. So if someone asked me about putting um, like a temperature screen on here, or a pressure screen, and that is something you could do. You could have it actually do the back calculation for you from pressure to temperature. Um, but honestly, like, it probably won't help that much since the, the temperature is already well above kind of like the standard brewing temperature of a PID machine. Um, probably better to just go by uh, taste when uh, doing the settings. Not that I think this will actually make any difference in the taste of the coffee, but um, it will sound like a fun project and I had most of the parts sitting around. So um, if anyone's interested, I'm thinking I might write up what I did here. Um, and post the components and the code. Um, because essentially if you have a little bit of electronics experience um, and the code's already written, you should be able to get these components for very cheap. This is about $13 from China. The board's about 15. Um, the controller's about 15. These are just cheap standard electronic components and the relay's about 10 bucks. So you could easily do this for less than $50 depending on what you have sitting around.